we are looking for someone who can multitask. Multitasking is a must for this position. Have you heard that before? There is this story about the young man who was uh, complaining to his dad about how overwhelmed he was with all the multitasking he was required to do at work. And so he, his dad tells him, don't worry, my child. At some point, you will realize that it is not that complicated at all. For example, at this point of my life, I can cry, cough, laugh, and even pee at the same time. It turns out that we can do several things at the same time. But jokes aside, multitasking is understood as an evolutive or survival skill. We see in nature that animals have the ability to look for a mating partner, food, shelter, and even escape from predators, all of them at the same time. Byung Chul Han, in his book, The Burnout Society, says that multitasking doesn't actually represent civilizational progress, but rather amounts to regression. He explains that multitasking is an attentive technique indispensable for survival in wilderness. The animal is forced to divide its attention between various activities, and he says that this is why animals are incapable of contemplative immersion. In other words, our aspiration for constant multitasking comes on account of our ability to fully immerse ourselves in contemplation. The idea of multitasking in our society, in the achievement society, is about being able to be more productive, meaning to achieve more. But neglecting the contemplative or the mindful aspect of our existence comes with a cost, such as feeling overwhelmed, experiencing burnout, and other things that are becoming common denominators of the struggle of our time. In a very interesting move, this Torah portion, Parashat Truma, presents the structure for a different model. The children of Israel just left Egypt. Then they were attacked by the Amalekites. They are starting to learn a new legal system and trying to live by it. And they are supposed to navigate their path toward the Promised Land. Not to mention that Moshe is about to be gone for 40 days. There is no doubt that they have a lot on their plates. But while all these things are happening, they are tasked with the building of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. And so we shall ask, what is the meaning of this task? They are in the middle of the desert. Isn't this added task a deviation or a distraction from what's really, really important. In the book, Discussions on Faith and Philosophy, Professor Ishayao Leibovich points out that to the creation of the world and humanity, Torah only dedicates 31 verses. However, to the building of the tabernacle, 
which is no more in his words than a strip, he says in Hebrew, a hat or a wooden box. Torah dedicates more than 300 verses. 31 verses, more than 300. So what is the reason for this length and emphasis? Paraphrasing the Soar, the Sfat Emet explains that because we received Torah, we were supposed to have the divine presence, the Shekhinah, dwelling within us. You can imagine the Shekhinah almost becoming the air we breathe. However, because of our sins, and remember that sins in our tradition mean missing the target. There are moments in which we feel separated from the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, or in other words, disconnected from our values or sense of meaning in our actions. Therefore, we read, we learn in this Torah portion, the action of building a physical space for the Divine Presence, of building the tabernacle, Knuckle, help us regain focus and direction, and while doing so, with our actions become holders, holy containers of that light. The idea of building a tabernacle when it feels like no item can be added to the long to-do list of the children of Israel it's like saying that only focusing on the things that we need to achieve is not enough for our existence. The building of the Mishkan comes to tell us that dedicating working hours for building inwards is essential as, or as essential as making it to the promised land, dedicating working hours, working hours during the week. So building inwards is as essential as making it to the promised land. But the Torah doesn't end there, and it goes farther. As we learn, two Torah portions later, in Parashat Kitisa, saying that that kind of work, the work of building it, the tabernacle belongs only, only in our routine. The building toward holiness, holiness doesn't belong in the contemplative experience of holiness. And therefore, any action related to building the tabernacle is forbidden in Shabbat. Think about all the important things that you live to do for when you have free time. All the important things that we keep for when we have free time. An interesting idea would be to consider actually enjoying free time when we have free time. The idea of the tabernacle is to tell us that building toward finding meaning should be a part of our life routine and not what we do when we are off. This is an invitation to balance the variety of aspects of our existence. There is another layer to this search, and it is, of course, Shabbat. In the words of Abraham Shosho Heschel, during six days we try to conquer the world, and on the seventh day we try to conquer the self. There is a day in which being is more important than having. There is a day in which immersive contemplation is not another component, but the main component. Rashi explains that the reason for which 
the building of the tabernacle is forbidden in Shabbat is because in Shabbat we go back to the status in which we were before Parashat Kitisa and the sin of the golden calf. And therefore, there is no reason for us to create a container for the light of the divine presence because it is out there in the open. Even for engaging in building holy structures, there should be a pause. That's, that's helping us to only focus on the joy of contemplating the beauty of our creation. That's the real reason there are 300 verses or more than 300 verses for the building of the tabernacle. Because it is about our ability and willingness to build. It is more than comprehensible to feel overwhelmed and burnt out when we are only focused on how to divide our attention without the possibility of intentional attentiveness, multitasking only for the purpose of moving forward or faster, so of faster cannot be nearly fulfilling. As we said, multitasking is a natural ability. However, focusing is a religious and a spiritual challenge. I would say invitation. May we define the mindset of the achievement society by dedicating time to inward attentiveness and growth. May we immerse ourselves in contemplation and find focus in a society that constantly invites us to dispersion. Turn off your phone. May we engage in adding to our long to-do list the building of structures that will help us capture meaning in our lives. And may we build a mishkan, a tabernacle, a sanctuary. And may we find connection, meaning, and light in our hearts. Shabbat shalom.